Hello, welcome to Tacos Reviews. Uh, as you see, it's a different location. Uh, I'm on, on vacation, but when I'm on vacation, you can't just stop gaming, can you? No. So, of course, I have some games with me. And I want to talk about them as well. This game has not been released yet. It is a Kickstarter pending game. It will soon come to Kickstarter, but I'm so lucky or fortunate to have tried it uh, beforehand. But what makes this game special for me is that it is designed by a Norwegian designer, and that is uh, kind of cool. So, uh, before we start the review, I want to just tell you that uh, all what you see here may change, because this is a prototype, and the Kickstarter version, the final version, will be, well, it can change, both in components, or even some small rule changes, or anything, anything can change. But uh, with that in mind, let's check this out. Are you ready, BB-8? Hello! As I said in the introduction, there's a mad king here, and he's uh, safely in this castle, or safely. Uh, the player playing the black pieces, he wants to stop this mad king, and wants to invade the castle and kill the king. That's the game, name of the game, kill the king. So, you see here, we have the black side here, just as in chess, black versus white. Uh, but before we come so far, we have to purchase these units. And the black player has 90 credits to buy for, while the white only has 45 credits to, to buy for. And you see they have all the same units, except black also has a ram, which, a battering ram, which can be used to ram the castle gates. Uh, after everyone has purchased all, all things, they will also choose a leader. And these leaders give special powers to the battlefield and to your player or your side. Uh, but usually, if the leader dies or something, uh, that is a bad thing. And after it's bought, we put a shield down between the sides, so you can't see what the opponent is doing. So we place the units at the same time, and the black player has the three first rows to place on, while the white player has the entire castle to place on. Uh, once the, both players have placed, we remove the shield and place the turn marker to turn one, and we are ready to play. And the black player starts first. All of the units comes with a lot of numbers you see, and they have, are very easy to spot, and the numbers are nice to have as well. You see the fist here that tells you how the high, how much chance there is to attack. The higher the number, the better chance. The foot here tells you how long it can move, so you can move two steps, one, two, for instance. And then you got the shields. The shields in here, the four, tells you it says four in defense from the front and then two on the sides and one on the back. And the catapulter has zero on all sides. You see there's a four and an asterisk. The asterisk says that something happens, and if you check the rules, it says that it's a five against cavalry. So it has better defenses against cavalry, the spearman. Also a neat thing is the attacker here, they have the horses. Uh, if they approach the wall and wants to climb, well, you just dismount the horse and become a, an infantry. So very nice indeed. And we're ready. It's me versus BB-8. Well, or anyone, actually. This game is for exactly two players. No fewer and no more. Uh, so it's like chess. We have black versus white and chess. Uh, so we have the black player now. He's the BB-8. He's going to move all these first. So what he does is to activate all these units and move them. And after he's moved all he wants to move, then we go to an attack phase. And we'll try to see which units can attack and if they want to attack and which order they're going to attack. And we, when we attack, we roll dice, and if it's a hit, uh, then the defender is able to roll the dice to see if he defends or deflects the attack. So there's a, a lot of uh, attack uh, rolling the dice here and back and forth, but first we have to move all the units of the black player. After turn one, there pro probably is no fighting at all, because there's too much range going on here. Unless maybe you have a leader who can both move and fire at the same time, because the catapults, they cannot move and fire at the same turn. Uh, so let's say the catapult was on the road. They can go one and one extra since it's on the road. This is a ram, so it might go actually four. But they can't attack this turn because there's too much range. But if it was a catapult, a catapult can attack between three and six spaces in front of them. So let's say it was a catapult, like so. You could attack not here, not here, but here, here, three, four, five, six. All these four spaces it can attack. So. Uh, it's probable It's probable that it, could, it might work, but catapults cannot move and attack at the same turn. After the defender has moved and done any attacks, we just go to the next turn. The attackers now moved one more time, and let's see if there's any possible chances of attack. So, the ram cannot attack. 
The catapults has moved, so they can't attack. And the archers, they have moved, but they're closer now. So let's see, can they attack? Uh, an archer cannot attack in front of him. He doesn't have swords. But he can attack here, here, and here. So depending on the range, it's 4, 3, and 2 here uh, on the value to be hit. And he cannot attack these guys here still. So at the moment, there is no attack going on for the attacker. So now the defender has moved. And let's see if he can attack something. With the archer here, he can attack 4, 3, 2. So no, he cannot attack anything here. Leaders can um, cannot attack. This one can attack 4, 3, and 2. Yeah. So by a 1 and a 2 on a dice, he will attack and kill this archer. No, he missed. Okay. Same here. We have nothing and 4, 3, 2. So 1 and 2. 2. It's hit. To defend itself, it needs to roll a 1. It says there on the tile. 1 in front. 3. So he died. That's it. Now with a catapult, he can attack 1, 2, 3 from here. 4, 5, 6. From all these 4 spaces. So you can attack this ram here. But you can also attack this space behind here. Okay, the space in the middle has a 1 to 5, so it's a great chance to hit. But if I attack here instead of here, I will uh, inflict, inflict, inflict more damage. So I'm gonna go here actually. So this is a 1 to 5, it's empty, so nothing happens. Now the ram, 1 to 4, 1. So it's hit, and uh, it cannot roll defenses, so it just removed from the game, or the unit on the ram is removed from the game. So here, 1 to 4. Miss, and here, 1, 2, 4, 4, hit. And the units that do not roll defense on catapults. So that was a nice thing for the defender. And now we just move to turn 3. Now that BB-8 has approached the wall, there are some new rules you need to uh, think about. For example, uh, archers cannot attack right in front of them. They are, don't have melee weapons. So if it's like this, they cannot attack each other. He can attack that one. But if it's like this, this one cannot attack here, of course, but this one can attack this one because it's downwards, so he has a better angle. So this is not a good uh, position for the black player, so he should go back here. But again, he has a negative to the die roll to attack upwards. Also, he can invade or try to climb the walls here by entering the wall and placing a ladder and try to climb the wall. And that is also very hard to do. Uh, so, what the attacker might try to do is use his catapults and make a hole in the wall. And when there's a hole, it's possible to go through the hole. For example, now, two holes, a horse can go one, two, three, four, five, and suddenly he's inside. So, the catapults try to make as much holes as possible, just to make it easier to go in, instead of just this one gate here. Okay, so BB-8 has been very aggressive. He's made a, lot of, a large hole in my castle, and he can just move his guys in. There is one thing I have to think about in round 6. If the attacking player has a leader, and the leader cannot go in by his turn, I'll get reinforcements from the sides here. Five cavalry horses, <laughs> units, from either side, I choose. And I can even activate them and use them on the same turn. So if during turn 6 he cannot enter with his leader, I will get a great reinforcement and the ties will turn in this game, most likely. If, however, he manages to get his leader inside the brown areas here on the, on the castle during turn 6, I won't get those reinforcements and that will really hurt me. And the focus will become here, the throne room, because he's going to try to really just break down this throne room. All it takes is one horse to go in here and break it down. Ugh. The defender, he will win the game if he survives all 11 rounds here. So if I play through 11, round 11 and I survive here, I win the game. The attacker, he wins the game as long as he manages to crush down the gates here to the throne room. And this will has to happen before uh, round 12, 11 finishes. So if it happens before round 11, he wins. So he can just march down with the horse, crash it down and win. It only takes one unit to actually do it. but. It's very hard to go, go in the stairs here and actually hit the wall and then the defender even has a, a chance to defend himself with a die. So this, get, this end part here is very exciting, but it's very crucial that you try to stop the leaders from getting into the castle and stop his units from trying to get around you and just push it back as long as you can. Okay, Kill the King is a simple game. 
And it's simple in the fact that it's simple to get into, it's simple to uh, learn the game, it's simple to set up the game, and it's simple to play the game. So all these steps are very simple, and that is a good thing. It's very uh, fast to get into, and uh, one game takes about an hour with both the learning of the rules and the setup and play through. Everything takes an hour, 60 minutes. So I really enjoy that. It could be faster as well if, uh, if the attacker loses very quickly or wins very quickly. Uh, what I miss about the game is this wow factor. There is nothing that really tells me that wow, this is truly the game I want to play. Uh, it is a nice game, I enjoy playing it, but uh, I really miss the wow factor. But, however, if you do enjoy chess for example, uh, there's one problem with chess. If you're playing against a very good player and you're a beginner yourself, you will lose. In this game you have dice that will mitigate that factor. Uh, also the dice will of course be sometimes to your benefit and sometimes to the opponent's benefit, but uh, after a while it will even out, because you're throwing dice all the time. But speaking of the dice, I, there is one thing I don't enjoy about the game. Uh, you roll dice to attack, that is fair enough. You roll and you get 1 to 3 to, to hit, but then if you hit, the opponent has to roll a die in defense. And this feels a bit clunky, or it's just kind of awkward to remember to roll the dice here, not there. And when catapult attack, you don't roll defense, you just kill it. And I, I would really like to have this uh, com combine it to one uh, throw of the dice, just to uh, eliminate this uh, eye roll and then you roll. It just feels a bit uh, like risk, maybe, but not even that because you don't roll at the same time. So, yeah, I, I don't like that about this game. But I do enjoy rolling the dice uh, and attacking and such, and it's a it's a nice enjoyable uh, aspect of the game. Uh, the graphics are okay. Uh, it's not very not very beautiful, but it's very functional and. This sort of game needs to be functional. You need to see what's going to happen and see what the units are going to do and clearly I'll see the terrain. So there, there's nothing new about this game in that sort of uh, thinking, but it, it really works. And I do enjoy the end game when uh, the attacker is getting close to the gate and all you have to do is just kill the gate and you win the game. It's very, so sometimes you get a really, really close tension to the end game and it's really exciting when you're rolling the dice and see what's going to happen. So I really enjoy that thing about the game, the end game. It's really exciting. And uh, 11 rounds is just enough for a defender to, to uh, keep the enemy at bay and just enough for the attacker to uh, reach the gates. And So 11 rounds is very nice in that way. So the game is very nicely balanced, that uh, it really works with the amount of towns you have, uh, rounds you have, and uh, yeah, it really works. And also with the leaders, they, they also are kind of the awkward thing about the game. Uh, you don't know the stats of the leader. They are kind of equal, but you have to check the rulebook all, all the time to see what the leaders are doing and uh, which leader you have. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Also, the rulebook needs a real overhaul to work. Of course, this is just a prototype because it's uh, not finished yet. So I've sent uh, feedback to the designer about what I think should be a change, and I hope he's going to make an overhaul about the rules because they really don't work today. It's really old-fashioned and not structured very well. But uh, that's that's something you don't have to keep that in mind. Just uh, check the Kickstarter and see if this is a game for you. And uh, if you like chess, as I said, you will enjoy this game. And it's a nice game to, for example, have in a cabin and to play that instead of chess. It's uh, it's a good two-player game, but uh, as I said, just miss the wow factor. But uh, check it out on Kickstarter. And uh, also check out my Patreon account for uh, how you can affect which games I'm going to review in the future at uh, patreon.com slash talkras. And you can uh, donate here and uh, just help me and support me. And every contribution really helps. And thank you to my current contributors. I really enjoy your help and your feedback. And yeah, just thanks. And uh, okay, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.